Good morning folks, it's six o'clock in the morning, it's Saturday and that can mean only one thing, we're going for an adventure. We're here on the banks of Loch Ryan in the bottom left hand corner of Scotland. Over in the distance there, that's Stranraer and over the other side we can see the two ferry ports at Cairn Ryan and that's where we're headed this morning because we're going to Belfast. This is where we parked last night, which is okay. It's just a little lay-by right next to the road. It was fairly busy with lorries. There's a lot of trucks going back and forward because of the ferries. But we're going across to Belfast as foot passengers today. So we'll just need to go and try and find somewhere to park. And then we'll jump on the ferry. Today is going to be a ferry comparison video and we'll start with a look at P&O and more specifically the European Highlander from Cairn Ryan to Larne. Well that's a good thing to know if you're travelling from Cairn Ryan, there's a car park and it appears to be free. This is free isn't it? Right let's go and get on the European Highlander. So just to confirm, the parking is free at P&O, but I believe there's a charge at the Stena port. Once inside, it was just like airport security and then through to the departure lounge. Is that our boat? Yeah, I'm afraid it might be a bit too small for you. It looks like we are go. There's only about 10 foot passengers. To get to the ferry, it would have been a good 10 minutes walk from the terminal building, so a bus was on hand for the transfer. What I didn't realise though, that there was the bus comes along for the ride, and it transfers us from boat to terminal on the other side of the Irish Sea as well. Hello. So here we are on board and to be honest the European Highlander was exactly what I'd expect from a ferry crossing of this distance and duration which is around 35 miles in 2 hours. There's a small shop, cinema, children's playroom and club lounge but the main two public areas are at the end of this corridor. We got distracted early by the breakfast offering. Someone doesn't really appreciate beans on toast as a meal, but she's still stealing it. Time for a look outside, and unfortunately with only the starboard deck open, any scenery on the port side would just need to be imagined. We're just passing the competitions port, that's Stena Lines port, and that's who we'll be coming back from Belfast with tomorrow evening. It was a dull, misty start to the day, and with my camera struggling to focus on the distant Ailsa Craig, we headed back indoors for a look up front at the bar. <laughs> While there wasn't much to choose from, this was our favourite place to relax. A bit early for the strong stuff, but they still served up a fairly decent Starbucks coffee. At this time of day, the bar was quite a nice place to just sit and stare out over the bow as we passed the course wall light. But for some, it was time to get a wee nap. Sleepy, sleepy. <laughs> There really wasn't much to see in this crossing, especially in a day like this, but we did catch another of the 49 weekly sailings, and the first spot of land was the Fair Maidens. We are now making our final approach to the Port of Larn. We advise that you remain seated, or move around with caution, until you are called down to the vehicle decks by means of a further announcement. 
In the meantime, please do not congregate at the head of the stairways. We were soon arriving into Larne, passing the impressive Chain Tower, built in memory of James Chain, the man who established the port and the sea route to Scotland that we've just taken. The town of Larne lies 23 miles to the north of Belfast, and this brings to the end a relaxed, if underwhelming, crossing with P&O ferries. So we were back to the same wee bus to run us across to the terminal building, this time exiting via the bow of the ship. So welcome to Northern Ireland. Now the P&O ferry, that is the shortest crossing from Scotland to Northern Ireland. But if, like us, you're going on to Belfast, you're going to need to jump on a train, and that's going to take you just under an hour to get into the city. It'll cost about £7, but thankfully the train station is right at the ferry terminal, so no problems there, you're not going to miss your train. Larne Harbour, 10.25, and that will get us into Belfast. 11.22. Northern Ireland Rail invested in some new trains at the back end of 2018 and I wonder if this is from that order. It was certainly looking pretty fresh. Very nice. So we just checked and we are on the correct train. It's not very obvious when you get here. It's so nice and clean. It's very nice and clean and there are charging stations everywhere. Windows are clean and really big luggage compartments. Scott Rail, take note. <laughs> the very quiet train so far, but of course, we are just leaving the ferry terminal and there was only about 10 foot passengers on it anyway, so I guess it might get a wee bit busier as we get towards Belfast, because it is Saturday. This was an easy connection to make from the ferry, and I'm guessing if the boat is delayed, the train will wait for you. While it did indeed get a bit busier en route, it was never very crowded, and in case you're looking for a ticket machine at Larne like us, there isn't one. You buy your tickets on the train. Welcome to Belfast. So we got off at Lanyon Place Station. There are a couple of stations in Belfast you can use, but we've taken this one so we could come along to St George's Market. But overall, this morning, the journey with P&O was clean, efficient, fast, and the train was absolutely brilliant as well coming into the city. And we'll be able to compare that tomorrow with Stena going back to Cairn Ryan. There's no such thing as a straightforward weekend with Steve. We are walking to the Stena ferry, which goes from Belfast, but to get from Belfast city centre, it takes over an hour down this lovely street. So that's longer than the train from Larne, and this is all because we couldn't find a bus or even an Uber this close to departure time. Never trust Google Maps. They've taken us down a dead end. Polish was saying we kissed the door handle.
but every cloud's got a silver lining. I got to have a nice close-up look at the port of Belfast. Maybe I planned it this way all along. It's a big shiny terminal building at Stena, and as far as I could see, this is just for the Scotland ferry. It's a whole other terminal for Liverpool, not too far from this one. After the long walk to get here, we didn't have too much hanging about to do before. Another long walk along the gangway to board. P&O would have had a bus at both ends for this kind of trick. By the time we were underway it would already be starting to get dark on this gloomy Sunday evening, so I wasted no time getting outside for a look around. What a difference from the P&O ferry. One of my frustrations on a ship is being so limited with deck space, but here I could just wander freely on both sides over three levels. This is more like it. And I'll bring you outside again a wee bit later to prove why this was the best time to explore. As these little fellas joined us on board, it was time to engage the bow thrusters and make a big turn before leaving Belfast Dock and heading out into the loch. Here you can see the Liverpool ferry just behind us, and the familiar sound of the Carol Arm Chorus piping us out of the harbour on our way back to Scotland. We were back inside just in time for some weather to arrive, and that meant the only thing in our minds was a good bowl of soup. So we are of course on the Stena line now back to Cairn Ryan. It's like chalk and cheese between this and the P&O. This is like a cruise ship or something. It's got a spa, it's got a cinema, it's got several decks you can go on inside and outside. The food's better. Isn't it? Yes. Food's way better. We're absolutely knackered and when we came on board we went up to the front because we saw these kind of bench seats and we thought maybe be able to lie down there and get a little sleep but we didn't even realise that was beside the bar and it's like a party ship up there. It's a completely different atmosphere. But the good thing is even though there's loads of people on this ferry there are a lot of spaces you can go and get some quiet. I see it on different decks as well which is completely different from the P&O which was just one deck and nothing else. So it's really nice. The only thing is, it's a bit of a misty evening. It's calm, but there's absolutely nothing to see outside and it will be dark soon as well. And when we get back to Cairn Ryan, we've got about a 30 minute walk to get the van. And then we've got three hour drive back to Edinburgh. While the weather continued to deteriorate outside, we had no problem passing our time inside the Superfast 8. It's quite incredible how much is on offer inside for a sub three hour crossing. Even the toilets were worthy of a shout out. Compared to the P&O, everything is on a much bigger scale, as you can see here in the shop. This was a busy ferry, but it was easy to find a quiet space to relax after a non-stop weekend, and there's no chance of getting bored either. The only thing I would say is don't count on the Wi-Fi, it's never a great service at sea, 
And my other advice, stay well clear of the bar, unless you fancy a crazy night of course, I must be getting old. Flashes. Even in two and a half hours, I'm sure we didn't see every corner of this amazing ship. But these lounge areas were our favourite. Lots going on, but never too loud. A perfect compromise and a nice place to be compared with what was going on outside. And that was our weekend over. Well, almost. We still had to face the wild weather and get home again, preferably before 2am as we were both working the Monday. But was it worth it? Of course it was. The final journey back to Edinburgh, but we've just got off the Stena ferry and now we've got to get to where our van's parked at the P&O ferry. It says 45 minutes walk in the rain. It's after 10 p.m. already and we've still got a three hour drive back to Edinburgh. Yeah! Oh. oh, and another one. Oh man. Oh, we can come off the road now. Doing the beach. Ah, you're right. Thanks so much for watching right to the end. I really appreciate it. And if you're new around here, don't forget to subscribe. See you soon.